In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to calculate the test statistic when we're doing a hypothesis test on a single proportion. And I'm continuing on with an example that I used in a previous video, but the example is this. An advertising company claims that more than 83% of people read advertisements on billboards. To evaluate this claim, you took a random sample of 100 people and 85 responded that they did re uh, read advertisements on billboards. So what we wanna do is we wanna calculate this test statistic for this example, and I'm only gonna focus on the test statistic. I'll probably uh, uh, bring up a couple things that were in a previous video, like for example, our hypothesis statement, just to recall what that is. We have our null hypothesis, um, H sub zero, which is going to deal with our, our population proportion P, and then we have our alternative hypothesis, H sub A, which is also going to deal with our population proportion P. Now, the hypothesized value about the population proportion is P sub zero, and that's given in the problem statement. That's the claim about the parameter. So the advertising company claims that more than 83% of individuals read advertisements on billboards. So that's really saying P sub zero is 0 0.83. And our hypothesis statement is always a statement about a parameter, so that's gonna deal with the 0 0.83 for each of those statements. And we just have to decide what symbol goes in between those. And if you recall, um, I talked about the fact that the statements of strict inequality fall in the alternative hypothesis statement. And if you look in that very first line, it says more than 83%. So that's the greater than symbol, and that's going to go in H sub A, our alternative hypothesis statement. And I like to use the complement rule when I'm first starting to teach hypothesis statements. So that means H sub zero is going to have to be less than or equal to 0 0.83. So now we have our, our hypothesis statements. Let's go on and identify some of the other information that we need in order to calculate our test statistic. So right here, you can see I have the test statistic uh, written out, the, the equation for the test statistic. And you can see that I need this value of P hat, which I don't have yet. I have P sub zero, which I already pulled from the given information, and then I also need the sample size n. So in this case right here, let's go ahead and identify some of the information. So first off, our sample size n is equal to 100. There are 100 individuals that were surveyed. Then we have the variable x. X is the number of favorable responses to that survey that relate to the population. So in this case, x are the 85 individuals that responded that they do look at billboards uh, when they're driving or whatever, or read the billboards. So now we have X and N, and we can use this information to calculate our sample proportion. So that's going to be equal to 85 over 100, which if we do the division on that, that ends up being 0 0.85 for our sample proportion. So that's the first step is calculating our sample proportion. Now we have everything we need in order to calculate that test statistic. We have P hat, which is given there. We have P sub zero right here. And we have our sample size, which is given right there. So let's go ahead and start working through this. So this is going to be equal to our sample proportion of 0 0.85 minus our hypothesized value of the population proportion, which is 0 0.83. Now I wanna talk about this for just a second, but really what we're doing is we're comparing to see how different the sample statistic is from the population parameter. And in general, the larger the difference between those two things, the more likely we are to reject our null hypothesis. And the smaller the difference between those two things, the sample statistic and the population parameter, the less likely we are to reject our null hypothesis. So really it kind of depends on that, but we're also accounting for the variability of the population. So in the, in the denominator, we have the square root of P sub zero times one minus P sub zero, all divided by our sample size. So P sub zero is 0 0.83, and that's going to be times one minus 0 0.83 all divided by 100. Now I'm expecting that you can use your calculator to, to calculate this out, but I always highly recommend doing the numerator for the subtraction and then doing the denominator, taking the square root of that kind of messy looking thing down there separately, because otherwise what happens is we end up typing this in the way that we see it and we only divide this 0.83 by that, 
um, square root of p sub 0 times 1 minus p sub 0 over the square root of n. So we want to be careful when we do this. So in the numerator, we have 0 0.85 minus 0 0.83, which is going to be a positive 0 0.02. And then in the denominator, when we take the square root of that big kind of messy thing, we end up with the value of 0 0.0376. Now I rounded that to four decimal places. You could round it to more than that or fewer than that. And then the last step for calculator, calculating our test statistic is to divide the numerator by the de denominator. So we're gonna take the 0 0.02 and divide that by the 0 0.0376. And that gives us a test statistic equal to 0 0.532. Okay, now the test statistic really doesn't tell us much about whether we're going to reject or fail to reject our null hypothesis. We have to calculate what the p-value is, and in a later video I'm going to use the same example, and we'll use that test statistic and the hypothesis statement in order to calculate the p-value. For right now, I just wanted to focus on calculating the test statistic.